It has been three weeks since the League of Species Battlefleet was defeated by the Ration, a species that is now believed to be what for thousands of years was thought to be a biological impossibility, a sentient space-faring predator species. It has also been revealed to the Sagittarius News Network that also participating in the battle were a joint fleet of Dreden, a minor league species, and their client species, the Terrans. We have unconfirmed reports that the Terrans are, unbelievably enough, another predator species. League members are reeling from the news, with riots breaking out on several planets. League leadership has urged calm, declining to comment until the Security Council meets, once the remains of the battle fleet return to Assemblage Station. Read an embassy on the League of Species Capital Station Assemblage. The two ambassadors were an odd couple, walking side by side down the corridors of the Dreden Embassy. On one side was a Dreden, one meter tall, with compound eyes set on either side of its head, wearing a black high-collared jacket and pants. Small tentacles could be seen extending from the sleeves of the jacket, writhing nervously. On the other was a human, taking one step for every two of the Dreden. Twice the Dreden's height and wearing a full environmental jumpsuit and carrying its helmet by his side. His eyes narrowed and jaw clenched as he walked purposefully down the hallway. The Dreden Embassy was one of hundreds located on the assemblage, the enormous station that served as the capital for the League of Species, but predated the League itself. It was built thousands of years ago by the Bonthans and the Arkan as a neutral meeting place between their races. As both species expanded, more races were found among the stars, and the station expanded, along with a number of races that used it. It was assemblage station that allowed the League of Species to form, and now it served as its bustling heart and capital. The center of the station was a 10 kilometers wide sphere, which was home to the council chambers themselves, and thousands other meeting rooms, offices and the infrastructure that housed the intricate bureaucracy that allowed a government made up of hundreds of member races and thousands of star systems to function. The central sphere was surrounded by concentric rings, each ring providing embassy space for member species, housing for league bureaucrats and docking stations to serve the member species. Each ring had been built as need demanded, so the oldest species in the league occupied the central rings with the newer species at the outer rings. The outermost ring, which housed the Dreden embassy as well as their client species, was under construction with scaffolding surrounding much of its circumference. Joining these rings to the central station were spokes containing transit tubes, allowing even occupants of the outermost ring to travel to the central sphere within minutes. I got here as quickly as I could. Nesh, Dreden ambassador to the Galactic Council panted as he struggled to keep up with the long strides of the human. How bad is it, Baden? Word from the League fleet reached the council yesterday. Since then, we've had protesters outside the embassy offices and half-dozen calls in the council for our forcible removal from the assemblage, which only failed on the technicality that the Republic of Terra isn't actually a member of the League. Three hours ago, one of your techs found a quill in one of the embassy's maintenance tunnels. Best guess is that they were trying to sabotage the embassy's environmental controls. If your techs hadn't caught them when they did, I'm sorry Baden. I know that this has moved up the timeline, but your species' secret was going to come to light eventually. Nesh shook his head ruefully. I thought, after Admiral Davies managed to pull the League battle fleet out, that Admiral Nuria could be an ally for us on the Council. She's the ranking member of the League Security Council, and if anyone would support humanity, I felt it would be the Admiral that just had her fleet saved by the Terran Navy. Nuria's not the problem, Nesh. It's Moktuk, her damned vice admiral. He arrived before the rest of the League fleet and has called an emergency session of the council. The vice admiral has charged Nuria with high treason, and the Associated Republics of Terra and Dreden Republic have been named as collaborators. Nuria was arrested, disarmed, and her personal guard disbanded as soon as she disembarked from her flagship. What? That brought Nesh to a halt. Despite Nuria being stubborn and arrogant as they come, she kept that fleet together. Without her leadership, there wouldn't have been a battle fleet for us to save. 
That's not the way that Maktab sees it, and it seems, he's convinced most of the Security Council as well. Ambassador Baden Woods of the Associated Republics of Terra paused, glancing down at his colleague. I'm surprised you don't know all this already. Usually, your people are the ones to hear the council whispers, before mine do. Like I said, I got here as fast as I could. I haven't even had a chance to debrief with our State Department. After the battle, I transferred from the Helena to a Dreden Republic frigate and headed to the confluence. We docked less than 10 minutes ago. I received word that the Jinkto was out of the paddock just as we were making orbit. Nash sighed. His legs weren't used to this much exercise after the three-week-long trip on the cramped Dreden frigate, and what Baden was telling him was potentially devastating. It had been over 120 years since his people and the Terrans met, and while things hadn't always been easy, the two races had become close allies. When more spacefaring species had been discovered, it was always the Dreden that made contact, keeping the humans' secret safe. Now, after all this time, humans had revealed themselves to the rest of the galaxy, and it happened with Nesha's tacit approval. He wondered how long it would be until State got word of this mess and he was recalled. They walked in silence for a while before Baden spoke again. I would have made the same call you did, Nesh. If Nurio retained her position on the council, she could have helped convince the rest that humans weren't monsters. We knew this day was coming eventually, and no matter what, we knew that being revealed as a predator species to a galaxy full of herbivores wasn't going to go smoothly. We'll make the best of it. The two ambassadors reached the blast doors that separated the Dreden embassy from the rest of the station. There, they were met by sharp salutes from a human and a Dreden security detail, waiting to escort them out of the relative safety of the embassy. Despite the thick doors, angry shouting from a score of different species could be heard. Leave your marines here, Baden. We don't know how other species will react to seeing one human after knowing what you are, let alone five of them, wearing combat armor. My people can handle the protesters. Nash took a deep breath and steeled himself to face the angry mob outside. So Baden, what's our plan? Well Nesh, we have to prevent Admiral Nurya's execution, clear both the Associated Republics of Terra and Dreden Republic of any wrongdoing, and convince the League of Species not to declare war on humanity on general principle. I thought we'd wing it. Baden reached up to place the helmet he carried over his head, completely obscuring his face as the blast doors slid open. I hate your plans, Baden. The bee continued. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.